welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to do a full review of the Raspberry Pi 5 with MX Linux. And before we get into the system itself, I want to talk briefly about my setup. So what we have here is I have the Raspberry Pi 5 and I have it mounted to my wall here. And I have right now we actually have the webcam and we have a microphone USB interface plugged into that. So that is everything that's running. We can see we have an M2 hat with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD in there. And so that is what our system is. Now we have a fully compatible uh, USB-C 5 volt, 5 amp power adapter wired directly into my onboard battery system, which is a 12 volt system. So we have a appropriate adapter going from a 12 volt down to a 5 volt and uh, it does max out at that maximum amount of uh, amperage that it needs at the 5 amps. It is important, yes, if you're running a Raspberry Pi 5 with no other attachments and doing very minor, maybe server type things, you might be able to get away from the older power adapters. I would highly advise don't do that because if your Pi calls for more power and it's not available, you can damage the circuitry. So make sure you have something that that can uh, run that. Now, that being said, this is actually drawing, according to my adapters, I don't have the adapter plugged in right now, uh, but it was running 1.72 approximate amps at 5 volts, which means it's drawing still under a 1 amp off of my battery. Now, I have a uh, 200 amp hour battery system here with, you know, about, what, about 160 to 180 usable amps, which means this thing can run for hours and hours and hours and hours. It does not draw a lot of power. We're talking 0.72 amps at 12 volts, making this a very ideal system for an off-grid application. And that being said, it is in and of itself a, a very compatible and very competent computer uh, as we will get into when we talk about our performance at the end of the video. But this guy is working really well. There's times you forget I am even on a Raspberry Pi at all. So you can see here I am on the desktop and as far as the distribution uh, I wanted to play around with different things. Of course, I ran the Raspberry Pi 4 for my first three years here living off grid on in the van on the road. And uh, the Pi 4 did struggle sometimes. It did seem a little laggy at times, especially when I had to get onto websites like managing Facebook, unfortunately, for clients. That Google Analytics was really, really slow because it was relying on the computer processor in the web browser to actually work right, which was problematic. Um, that did run Manjaro, and I ran Manjaro at that time because when I put that Pi together four years ago or four or five years ago, however long ago it was, Manjaro really was the only distribution that had everything working out of the box. Every networking, all of the sound, all of the video, everything worked smooth, way better than anything else. Now with the Pi 5 coming out in a few more years of development, more distributions are out. I did experiment with Armbian. I thought that might be the distro of choice. But for some reason, even though the Cinnamon version was technically the same, there were some weird tweaks with it that just weren't working quite right. And it did have a little bit slower and laggier performance. Uh, additionally to that, Armbian did a few weird things like having a Firefox policy. Easy to get around. I just to leave the the policy uh, files from the, the system files. But nevertheless, it did raise a few concerns with that and it didn't work nearly as well. So I got the idea, let's try MX Linux, which I really like. And MX Linux has backports available and other tools inside of the, uh, the various um, um, updater packages and things. So I could install Cinnamon on that and I really wanted to play around with a desktop running Cinnamon. Yes, XFCE would be a little bit lighter. In fact, I could can log out of this and log in under XFCE. The performance is about the same. So it's not like you get a huge system uh, performance hit by running Cinnamon. Uh, maybe a tiny little bit, but it is not noticeable. This thing works well. 
Now, as far as my theming, I did find that the theming did actually impact performance. This is something that seems to be an oddity in uh, Cinnamon, depending on what theme. Now, I'm running with the Arc Dark and the Papyrus Icon theme. Uh, I did actually want to experiment with uh, something that was um, uh, like a darker, redder type things and things like that. And so I had this Eternal Darkness, which was nice and cool and red everywhere. Let me just switch to that really quick. So you can kind of see that you had some really cool things. I actually have a, a red Debian logo there as well. But what I actually noticed is you can actually see a little bit here. It was actually a little laggy. And so uh, for that reason, I went back and I was using the arc darkness everywhere and that did get rid of it. So there is something about the theme, whatever your theme is, may impact the performance of Cinnamon on a computer like this. I did really like that. It was sure too dark for some people, but overall it was kind of fun. Played around with it, but ultimately every day as an everyday working system, I actually do like arc dark. It is a very nice Cinnamon theme and it performs a lot better than the Eternal Darkness theme. I'm not sure what the difference, why was it some form of transparency or whatever else, I really don't know. Uh, I did actually have to fight a little bit on this with getting the Light DM working properly with the images. I think I covered that in my initial MX Linux review of this, which we were still doing on the SD card. Of course, I migrated the SD card directly over into the SSD, and then I used FDisk to expand the partition. If you do that, you have to update two locations on the system. Let me show you where those are in the event you're testing it on an SD card, and then you want to do the M2 hat. So uh, you're going to go into the file system and into the boot. Now, the older Raspberry Pis, you use your config.txt here. Now it is under con uh, firmware, and I believe it's confirm uh, firmware and then config.txt. But there's this other one, uh, CMD line. Nope, I didn't mean to run that in the terminal. Uh, I want to run that in, I just want to display it. Hopefully running that in terminal didn't do anything. So over here, this is a, where it tells you where your partitions are. If you go in and you use FDisk to expand the partition, it will change your partition UUID. So you need to run a block ID to figure out what your new block is. You need to update this number here in this file here in the Raspberry Pi. And also you need to update it on the Etsy FS tab file as well. Those are the only things I had to do. Now, as far as uh, overall talking about performance, so actually we'll get to performance in a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about my uh, software. So I am using this for web design. So I have KeePass XC. I use GIMP for my photo manipulation things. I might actually have Inkscape on here as well. If I haven't, if I, yeah, I did, did run Inkscape. Uh, I am actually using the color picker, which is an excellent tool for coloring. In this case, I have all of the colors in here are the color palette used for one of my uh, recent web design uh, projects I just did. So I can just, these are basically all the colors of the theme of the site. So I can just go over here and copy it if I need to know what the colors are. So you can actually have this and grab colors from anywhere on the desktop. In this case, I actually use the palette and, uh, and things like that. And uh, with that being said, um, the other things that we're doing, I have Bluefish Editor, I have FileZilla, I'm using email with Thunderbird and with Evolution. And uh, overall, that's about what I am doing. So that's the software we're running. Everything runs great using all those. Oh, also uh, uh, for text editing, I'm using Genie with... Uh, I did want to have a basic text system that had a spell checker. Genie was the only one that I found that had sp uh, a spell checker available. I had to install it separately. You just need to plug in the Hun spell plugins for Genie. So, uh, Gary, Genie. Yeah, G Gary's the email one. Genie's the one. <laughs> Figure out which one it was. Let me double check. Yeah. Genie, I think it is. Yep. So that allows you to run spell checking. You just need to set that up. Now, as far as the, the last bit here, the performance, the performance overall is really, really good. Uh, I am right now recording this with Simple Screen Recorder and 
the webcam running so you can see me down in the bottom and you can see the the system is it's not struggling it has kicked its fans up a little bit you can see the cpu is now running at 67 percent memory's at 18 percent temperature of the cpu is still hovering at 68 67 68 c which is good perfectly acceptable range Overall performance is really good. There are just a few minor things. The first is you might notice the mouse cursor is constantly blinking. That does that if you're not moving it. And you will also notice that little blockiness showing up. I wish I could find a resolve for that, but that to me is extraordinarily minor for the fact that everything else works really well. Armageddon didn't have a blinking cursor. It just didn't perform as well. I'll take a blinking cursor with better performance over anything else. Now, the only other issue that I found I also saw on my system under um, Manjaro, and that is that sometimes when you boot up Evolution, it gets stuck downloading emails. Completely different architecture, completely different everything. Well, the architecture is the only thing that's the same. I'm wondering if this is a, an, an ARM issue on Evolution where sometimes the email downloads get stuck. I think it might be. But with that, um, overall, the system works really well. So if you're looking for a very good, competent computer in an off-grid setup or just a low power setup, hey, we got to save the planet by saving our power. The Raspberry Pi 5 is absolutely incredible. We have about, uh, I think I have uh, $80 in the board itself. I have $12 in the M2 hat. I think I have 50 to $75 in the uh, NVMe and I have $10 in the case. That is a really, really low price for a very competent computer, as long as you're not doing like super processor intensive things. So that is my overall review of MX Linux on the Raspberry Pi 5 in production in an off-grid battery powered setup. With that guys, thank you for watching. Let me know other things you'd like to see with the Pi 5 down the road. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.